What's going? What's good? What's good in the hood? How's it hanging? Keep it, keep it hanging. Keep it. I'm very excited today for a few reasons. Reason number one, I went surfing this morning and it was sick. Had it where it was just pumping. I got my new board. Red dog. Grabbing around. Just getting absolutely kicked. Uh, reason number two, reason normal dua is my new motors have come out and it's been about a week now since the freestyle edit I put out using them and I thought what better than to tell you actually about them <laughs> instead of just giving you some uh, some details in the description of a video that no one reads. So this video I'm going to go over my new motor, uh, why I made a new motor, how I actually made a new motor, how I made a motor in the first place. My God, who would who would make a motor with my face on it? Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, I don't know, bits and pieces about them and, and why I designed them the way that they're designed. I think that's quite cool. To really set uh, the scene well, I have to go back to when I made the V1 stoke motor. Great motor. Oh man, talk about a high quality motor. My good mate, Tim, you may know him from the race vlogs. He's down in Canberra. He runs a store called RC Bits. Has been doing for the last decade or so. Quite impressive. Talk about longevity, quite impressive, 10 years. So yeah, he's he's made a whole bunch of motors for a bunch of different people in the club. Uh, primarily Henry, he had a few, but considering um, he is now second place to uh, the, the quick boy koozie, then look, honestly, they needed to get rid of his motors. Um, not that any had sold in the first place, but uh, no, Henry was out, Jacuzzi was in, so we got some Jacuzzi J Stoke motors made up. All we did, I picked out a motor from Brother Hobby's list of many, many different motors. Chose the KV, obviously being 1969 KV, and voila! Got my mate Tom to do up some cool logos and slap them on there. Bob's your uncle, V1 motor is done. I have no say in the design of it, only the colours and the KV, that was it. But, that has all changed. Because this time around, Brother Hobby and Tim see Jacuzzi J as the uh, commodity and prized entity that, uh, that it is. And we decided to redesign the motor from the ground up. See, it's quite difficult designing a motor when there's so many other good ones on the market. Like you think of them, bloody hell, you got your T motors, that, um, what's that new brand called? Axis, Axis Flying, the X-Novas. They're all fantastic motors, my heavens. Like, one, they're all very similar in terms of like, performance wise, but build quality and all that stuff, they're all absolutely fantastic. So why bother? Ah, I'm glad you, uh, thank you for asking that question because I will tell you, um, I always found shortcomings in, in the motors. They, they were either, uh, not a unibel design, or they didn't have good prop grip, or the prop shaft was silly, or I didn't like the colors, or they were too expensive, or they were too cheap and clunky and blur. So I, being Jacuzzi Jack, have molded, transformed, gathered all the great things that I loved about every motor I've used over the last eight years of flying mini quads, and I've put it all into one. And this is it, the Jacuzzi J Soak motor, V2, designed by yours truly. From the ground up, it was like building Rome in 15 minutes. I was there with a sketch pad and pencil and rubber, a lot of rubbing out, I'm not very good at drawing, uh, and I was there designing this motor all by myself, which is concerning, yes, but that eight years experience, baby. <laughs> there are three things that um, really differentiate, I don't know how's that, <laughs> differentiate this motor from the rest of the pack. Uh, one, uh, I designed it. <laughs> it's a pretty good stoke motor, baby. It's got 969 KV. What more would you want? I'll tell you what more you'd want. Number one, prop grip. A lot of motors suck at designing actually good prop grip. My, my theory behind this is because a lot of the motors are designed by engineers who don't fly, uh, nor do they have girlfriends. So, uh, I don't really have a girlfriend either, but that does, that's beside the point. I'm Jacuzzi J, come on. In my years of testing, X Nova, I've had the best prop grip that I've used of all motors. T motors are hit and miss, that, that small bump design, it works sometimes and then doesn't work other times. It doesn't really grip the prop though. And at the end of the day, the motor's job is to spin these boys uh, real bloody quick so that you can fly and rip balls. However, they all suck 
X Novas were okay, but the rest of the motor was not good. It didn't have a uh, bolt at the bottom of the motor so that you could repair it. Um, and it wasn't a Unibel design, so it wasn't as strong. Hence why I didn't end up flying it for very long. I'll show you some shots of the actual grip that I've designed so that you can see how it works. But um, I've gone for that X Nova idea of having large spikes. I think small amounts of large spikes that are big, deep, and really get into the prop actually grip the prop way better than lots of tiny little ones because they go right up in there and they get up in that polycarbonate's junk and they grab onto it like it's something real bloody important. Get them, dog. After heaps of flying with them, I've had no problem at all. They are absolutely fantastic. You can even see on the prop when you take it off where it's dug its teeth into it and that's what I want. I want that. I don't want props coming loose. 150 meters away from me and I have to get my lazy ass up and go and get it. No way, Jose. So that's why the prop grip's important. That's why I've designed it the way that it is. And that's why this motor is already better than the rest of them. You beauty. Alasan number dua, reason number two is prop shafts. Now that's often overlooked and it's often overestimated. We kind of give ourselves a quite large prop shaft maybe to compensate for something, I'm not too sure, but it's completely unnecessary and it actually makes the durability of the motor worse, having a you know, considerably longer prop shaft. So what I've done is I've done some quite extensive maths and I've worked out that a six, six mil prop hub or a seven mil prop hub will be very suited to a 12.5 mil prop shaft coupling with the six mil nut on the top. Do your maths, that's all you need. I don't understand why they've ever been longer. Like you're not running a 10 mil prop, like shaft hub thing. Like what the point, what was the point in having stupidly long prop shafts? I do not get it. Also, it's extra time. When you want to change a prop and you have to take the prop nut off, that five, six extra rotations, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> I mean, you like doing that, I'm sure, whatever you're into, but Jesus, it's a pain. So, with this, the way that it is, super flush, I only have to do like two rotations of the prop nut, one even, and then boom, off it comes. But, I've designed it so there is easily enough nylon in the prop nut for it to grip onto the shaft and stay attached. So, there's no worries about it coming loose, but there's enough grip there on the shaft for it to hold the prop down, no worries at all. And it doesn't even end there. If I've got the prop shaft crazy long, like, I don't know, 15 mil or 16 mil or something, which some of them are, it's stupid. Do maths, Jesus Christ. Um, then the prop shaft, if you're flying in a bando or some concrete place, you hit the prop shaft, it knocks out all the, you know, thread from the shaft, and then the prop nuts are bitch to get off. It just gets stuck and cogged up all the time. So stupid. So now, flat, nothing's getting hurt. If anything does, it's the prop nut. That's fine. I can do with a prop nut getting hurt, but if it knocks out the whole bloody thread of the prop shaft, then you've nearly killed the motor. So, nah, no thank you. <laughs> no thank you at all. That was two reasons why this motor is um, better, in my opinion, than others, and two of the reasons why I designed it um, this way. The third thing that I have changed is, from, from the V1 at least, um, is the bell. The durability of the V1 bell was really quite fine. Like, I didn't have many, if any, any, not many, if any, problems with it, but because I have that redesigned uh, prop grip central piece, it did need a redesign for the spokes and then the general bell apart from that. So I've gone for the classic like bloody Holden Barina alloy cat wheels, just like freaking line back. Uh, uh, uh. So I've gone for that, super classic, milled out some sections of it so it looks like super clean and that's pretty much it. That is really all I've changed of the motor. The rest of it is exactly the same as its V1 counterpart. It is a 22, wait, what are we, what are we sizing as? 2207.5, 1969 KB motor. Now there's more, there is more to it than just saying, oh, it's a 2207, blah, blah, blah. High KB motors lack girth. 
They lack that grit. They lack that bottom end power that the 2306 gives and all those beefy, chunky motors. So by adding that 0.5 difference, it actually gives the motor more grip in the lower end and a lot more just general power, which high KV motors lack. I tried that new T motor 2080 KV motor in 2207 and from zero to like 40, Ugh. Ugh, it's a little bitch. This one though, uh, uh, just power, but not too much power because this is like a proxy machine. That's my shtick. Back there, them trees are close as all hell. And this thing gets around them like no tomorrow. With that extra grip though, it does allow for those tight low throttle turns to be crystal clear. So I'm doing them low, low speed trippies and all that stuff. That helps, that helps, it helps lock it in. Just that the extra power. So, you know, that's why the status size is good. And the KV, it's 1969 KV. Hey, it's good for me, it's damn good for you. So, not much more to say about that. That's really it about the actual motor itself. Um, I mean, it comes with uh, 10 mil screws, button head, 12.9 grade, hardened steel or whatever. Um, I've gone for 10 mil because reason no more satu is 10 mil uh, bolts is actually fine for a six mil arm with these motors and base and everything. Um, the Sandstorm, my race quad, as well as the Apex, my freestyle quad, they both have six mil arms and the 10 mil bolts work fine. But it has enough clearance there left over that if you are one of those blokes who run skids on the bottom of your freestyle quad, then the screws are suitable for that. Now, if you feel like, oh, hang on a second, these are a bit long, maybe you've got four mil arms or something, then, I don't know, use your own screws. But it's better to overcompensate than undercompensate in this department. Nothing worse than having a screw that's just that little bit too short. It spins on the inside of your motor base. Ugh, no thanks. Uh, for price, they come in at uh, $33.99 a motor, which is more than the V1. Um, Brother Holby told us this was because of a uh, what was it, the magnets or something? Apparently magnets are more expensive. So we wanted to actually bring out a bell and just sell the bell so that people who had the V1s, i.e. me, I didn't need to buy a new pair of set of motors. I wanted to just sell the bell so that people could, you know, switch them out and whatever. But the magnets being the expensive part meant the bell was gonna cost us like 20 bucks, like us 20 bucks. So we'd have to sell it to you guys for more than $20 for a bell. Oh. Stuff that. No, I wanted these to be cheap. I don't want them to be expensive. And if Brother Hobby are legit and the magnets are getting more expensive out of scarcity, then all motors are going to start to get more expensive, which is a shame. But I don't know. They could have just been, you know, messing around with us. But 33 bucks is still on par with a good price motor. There are motors that are 40 bucks. Go get your Blackbirds and then those room ones <laughs> something like that stupid um go get those for 40 odd bucks or something but for 33 dollars that's a good standard price for a motor these days so who are these motors for you know like if you've got motors already then i don't see a point in you know, buying new ones just keep using the ones you've got but maybe let's say your motors are a little bit old they've been through a few crashes they're starting to get a bit how you're going you're looking you're in the market for a new set of motors yeah you've seen those d french dudes going doing mad bloody outdoor inverted your spins on huge farms in the middle of nowhere if you're surrounded by farms in the middle of nowhere by all means get 2200 kv on your 6s machines and go ballistic but if you're a normal person who flies in normal spots um, and you enjoy a sexy looking motor with that naughty like industrial aluminium color scheme with the naughty jacuzzi blue then this is a great motor for you in terms of how you would set these up on your quad if your quad you know freestyle quad was anywhere from like 600 to 750 780 grams you know that's a general that covers quite a broad range of of setups um then the motor would be suitable for for you um if you enjoy a, a quite linear throttle curve with a lot of uh low end resolution but high end <laughs> bang so you can get that bang action then i love 
um, the Stoke Motor V2 coupled with the FX P3s, these, these little bad boys. That works fantastic, that's my setup. I designed the motor based on this prop. Um, if you want a little bit more power, then I'd go the J37 or J40, which is HQ's new prop. I would go that with these, that would work quite well. If your freestyle quad's like a real porker, you know, you're looking at 800 grams sort of deal, then a high KV prop is gonna be very inefficient. Um, that spinning them real quick and then having the, the battery capacity to provide it throughout your whole flight, it's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be tricky. So I would recommend it on, um, on a typical 600 to 750 gram freestyle quad with a dank lightweight, low pitch prop. And that is the setup. That's prima. That's that good. So that's really it, honestly. Nothing else to say. Um, they're sick. They're available at two stores in Australia, Rising Sun who ship internationally, uh, and RC Bits, which is more of a local style store, but they ship internationally as well. So get them at either, bloody pick yourself up some koozie merch if you bloody feel like it, and uh, I don't know, treat yourself to some naughty uh, fresh motors and ah, bruv, send me pics when you got them. Send me pics all the time, you dirty dogs. So thank you, blah, 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 blah. Um, be good, enjoy your motors if you go grab some. Uh, yeah, appreciate you all. Love you lots. Thanks heaps for watching. Bloody good stuff. Thanks for watching. Go buy the motors. Cop the merch. Have a nice day. Go get pitted. Thanks for watching. Two paddles pop up. Grab the rails. Tuck under. <laughs> right. Um, good. Goody, goody. All right, have a great day, yes. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. oh, oh, who put that there? Who put you there? <laughs>